Okay, issue four, potpourri. What more from the week? Let's start with Kentucky, where the family of Breonna Taylor received a $12 million compensatory payout this week. Miss Taylor, an emergency medical technician, was shot and killed by police officers during a botched raid back in March. An African-American, Miss Taylor's plight fueled mass protests around the nation. Then, in Washington, the Justice Department announced an investigation into whether former National Security Advisor John Bolton's account of his White House tenure included classified material. Finally, on the West Coast, the normally more liberal-minded Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals this week delivered a victory for President Trump. In a two-to-one ruling, the court overturned a lower court hold on a Trump administration effort to remove deportation protections against approximately 300,000 immigrants. Some of these immigrants have been in the U.S. for more than 15 years, but the Trump administration says that conditions in their home nations have improved and it's time for them to head home. Kaylee, uh, feel free to comment on any or all of those various issues. So I think in regards to Brianna Taylor, the real question is, is this enough? Obviously, the settlement was large, and it's great that the family is getting some sort of justice, but I would argue that it almost serves as a distraction to the real problem, which is we need to pass legislation to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again. You know, Senator Rand Paul introduced a bill that would have um, banned no-knock warrants, and it really hasn't gone anywhere. And then even on other forms of police reform issues, Senator Mike Braun also introduced a bill that would have seriously curbed back various things and the Trump administration wouldn't even touch it. In fact, the Trump administration literally discouraged Braun from talking about it at all. So those are very serious things and it, it really should force us all to consider what more we need to do in order to um, make sure that tragedies like Breonna Taylor's never happens again. Um, and, the, and as far as uh, the Ninth Circuit's ruling, I think that we are better as a nation morally and financially when we welcome immigrants. And I think it's really sad that the Trump administration is going to push all of these people out for no reason at all, really. Um, and so we'll see what happens. Uh, Clarence, one of the, the challenges here in terms of police reform and no-knock warrants is that the police would say that puts us at grave risk because it allows people with guns to prepare for us to come in and uh, destroy evidence. And yet with this case and other cases, there does seem to be this momentum that some idea of reform, serious reform, is needed. Fair? Well, part of the settlement here uh, is uh, the, the, about the Breonna Taylor settlement uh, is uh, new procedures for uh, issues right. like this. Uh, for example, before a no knock warrant can be issued, a senior commander has to approve it. Uh, amazingly, that hasn't been the case. It's been too easy uh, to get them. And, and that's the kind of reform that moves in the direction of what Senator Paul is talking about. Uh, and uh, this is something that also uh, the money here uh, is uh, going to reforms li like that, uh, not just to the family, uh, and, and uh, it, it's all being paid by taxpayers. Uh, that's the other problem with these uh, cases of police conduct and misconduct. It, uh, the taxpayers wind up footing the bill. Uh, it's not like we're actually solving the problem just through these settlements. But the kind of actions that can be done to, to uh, get the reforms Kaylee's talking about, that's where we'll really see some see a movement toward justice. Pat? Yeah. I, uh, I think Clarence makes some good points here. But the movement toward police reform and chokehold, stopping those and making folks wear cameras, all the momentum has stopped for that. Now, this settlement with Brianna Taylor, she should, her family should have gotten a considerable sum of money for what was done to her. It was an outrage, indefensible, a horrible mistake. But let me tell you, this is where it's all gone, Tom follow the money. This tremendous movement nationally eventually is going to move from police reform, which it, it really didn't even get through the Congress, it didn't try to, to this whole idea of reparations, which is going to tear this country apart politically. I don't know if it's coming that soon, but there's a lot more talk about it in the Democratic Party. Uh, Biden has said he would, everybody will support a study of that. That's where it's all going to end up, I think, the fact that the country, in effect, owes Black folks something that we have never delivered and reparations is going to be the response and it's going to be a horribly divisive issue. Uh, uh, I, I have sort of a, a, a quick response on that. Yep, go, go. Well, I, I just want to say I've been covering that reparations debate off and on since it began with Congressman, late Congressman John Conyers. And in summary, it's not going anywhere. 
uh, uh, you're going to see some uh, re reforms perhaps down the line uh, that won't be the kind of cash payments to the descendants of slavery that people tend to think of when they think of reparations. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, I disagree that we're going to hopscotch from uh, police reform to reparations and have nothing happen in between, and then it's going to be divisive, as Pat just said. Uh, the fact that uh, Congress has been unable to pass any legislation, it's an election year. The Senate refuses to take up anything. So uh, legislative reforms, federal, are not dead. And you have police uh, uh, around police around the country grappling with what to do. And there is a lot of change that is underway. It is not stopped. It's not gone away. Uh, and I think the, the kind of thing that uh, Breonna Taylor was subject to, I think that reform is already happening in, in a lot of places. I, what I found especially moving was the attorney Crump basically saying of the settlement that this was the largest settlement. And he started out saying, you know, for someone uh, as a victim of police, police brutality, for a, uh, a black woman. And then he said, for a black person. And um, I think the recognition of the importance of her life and how it was taken is a, is a signal event. And uh, that's, it, it doesn't end it. And I think legislation is inevitable, uh, but it, 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 it's, the Congress moves slowly if it moves at all. And, and, you know, capping off that issue, you know, one of the, obviously that we do have these great challenges and the, mm -hmm. the fact that Breonna Taylor is buried and not out living her young life is testament to it. But at the same time, you know, I just wonder with, with cities like New York, where the police feel they don't have the support of political leadership to patrol, where the pushback will come, because I do think it will come that people want to feel secure as well as being treated fairly by police. But Kaylee, on John Bolton, uh, how much do you see... One of the reasons, you know, what there was classified material in that book was not so much that he's talking, you know, USS Jimmy Carter tapped this Chinese cable, but uh, he puts in the book uh, conversations with his national security advisor counterparts in the UK and France, which those nations would have regard as top secret classified. So there is some legitimacy here, but how much do you think it's about that, the investigation, and how much do you think it's about President Trump picking up the phone to Bill Barr and saying, Barry Bolton. I plainly, I think that President Trump is mad that he wasn't able to stop the book's publication in the first place. And now this is about retribution. But, you know, you're right. There are legitimate concerns that Bolton included information that he should not have. Um, but I would argue that none of it is endangering to the nation's reputation or to these other nations' reputations. It, it's not classified in the sense that it's, you know, releasing top secret intelligence that no one can possibly know. It was relaying conversations with other people. But I mean, to be honest, that could endanger the U.S.'s standing with our allies if they feel like we're betraying their interests um, just, you know, to score political points. So there's a legitimate argument. I don't think that Trump is doing it for the right reasons, per se, but maybe the court will agree. Uh, Tom, I think this is, oh, I'm sorry. You, you, you can go to Pat and then I'll so go to Clarence. Okay, Tom, I think this is serious because Bolton's book was reviewed by the National Security Council, I believe. So quite obviously, it appears that Bolton defied them to get material into that book that they believe genuinely should not have been in there. And I think they're going to they're gonna make an example out of him. And I don't think they would have moved unless they had hard evidence from their standpoint that this right. really crossed the line. Is there, I mean, would Trump be magnanimous and say, don't do anything to Bolton? Perhaps not. <laughs> yeah, perhaps not. Clarence. Yeah. I, I've known John Bolton off and on for several years, and I, we, we disagree on, on almost everything, but I believe, I believe he's, he's a man of enough character and intelligence that he would not be uh, revealing classified information that there's any real danger to our national security. Yeah, my inclination was that, the, that he got a, a, a pass on all of that stuff, and then Trump didn't like it. This is, I think it's a political vendetta. So Eleanor, uh, the, the final issue we had there was the immigration ruling. Um, it seems though that immigration, at least in the way it was in 2016, has dissipated as a core concern for the nation. Do you think that's a fair assessment? No, I don't think so at all. It's just how many things can you keep on the front page at the same time? I think uh, kids in cages and you know, now uh, 
charges that women have been given unwanted hysterectomies when they're in high ice custody. There's still lots, lots out there that we're not necessarily proud of as a country. But you referred to the, the, the Ninth Circuit as liberal. This was a three judge panel and you get, it's a roll of the dice. And the, the deciding judge was a Trump appointed uh, judge. So uh, I don't think it's the Ninth Circuit suddenly changing its mind. And uh, it'll be appealed. And you know, I don't know how quickly things will change, but uh, Trump has made an enormous impact on the courts. And uh, even if Biden is elected and if there's a Democratic uh, Senate, uh, a lot of policies and procedures are gonna be challenged that might not ordinarily be challenged. And I would okay. point out the Supreme Court is gonna hear oral arguments on Obamacare a week after the election. Right. Uh, Obamacare is still, um, in, in the throes of being killed by Trump. Pat. Well, um, the courts and judges and justices have really basically given, given way to the demands of the President of the United States, usually when you're talking about immigration. And on this issue, it would be interesting, we can tell by how Biden reacts. Is Biden going to denounce this as an expulsion and deportation of all these folks who ought to be fast track to citizenship or not. That will tell us whether it's red hot as an issue as it was, and I think it still is.